Now, unprecedented cuts to federal programs in the U.S. have hit everything from international aid to veterans' benefits. But one area that Donald Trump and his appointees have been particularly keen to cut has been scientific research. That has sparked fears of wide-ranging harm to healthcare, climate protection, and food safety. We are going to conquer the vast frontiers of science, and we are going to lead humanity into space and plant the American flag on the planet Mars and even far beyond. While aiming for Mars, U.S. President Donald Trump has been cutting science here on Earth. Part of a White House project aimed at, quote, ending wokeness and the weaponization of government, promoting efficiency in government, and making America healthy again, unquote. But scientists say it's making the U.S. a hostile place for research. Funding cuts in the tens of billions of dollars have hit fields as diverse as medical research, climate science, nuclear safety, and marine biology. Courts have halted some of those cuts for now, but researchers fear the worst. Medical research and modern medicine itself have come under fire from the head of the Department of Health and Human Services, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. He's a vaccine skeptic who has promoted unproven cures. He's compared the medical establishment to the U.S. Agency for International Development, which has been radically downsized. Very few people understand how sinister this agency really is, and President Trump saw that, and he stood up to it with a masterstroke. And we want to do the same thing with the institutions that are stealing the health of our children. At Columbia University in New York City, hundreds of millions of dollars in medical research funding was recently canceled, allegedly because of the university's failure to stop anti-Semitism. The White House has also taken aim at indirect costs, including electricity and hazardous waste disposal. Climate science has also taken a big hit. Trump has called global warming a hoax. Now he's turning that sentiment into policy downsizing the Environmental Protection Agency and trying to claw back a $20 billion climate fund appropriated by Congress. There has been pushback. Stand up for science protests have happened in cities nationwide, calling for restoring funds, rehiring fired employees, and an end to government interference. When there's no one to keep our food, air, and water quality safe and clean, real people will get sick. When there's no one watching and alerting us to hurricanes, wildfires, and other extreme weather and climate impacts, people will die. The impact of making drastic cuts at a time of outbreaks of diseases like measles in the U.S. and with the threat of a possible bird flu pandemic looming isn't clear yet. But time will tell what the costs are when respect for expertise and science take a backseat to budget cutting and to politics. Anna Katharina Hornig is director of the German Institute of Development and Sustainability and joins us now. Welcome to DW. Thanks for your time today. Can I start by asking how scientific collaboration with your colleagues in the US has changed since uh, President Trump took office? Well, I mean, our colleagues in the US um, are affected by the culture of fear that is, that is spreading, um, which goes hand in hand with forms of self-censorship. Um, in the field of climate science, as well as in the field of health, for instance, we have a situation where John Hopkins now is releasing um, around 250 people in uh, Baltimore itself, but also around 2,000 people in um, around 44 countries around the globe. So um, amongst our partners that are affected are not only those that are actually located in the U.S., but even more so um, also partners um, around the globe and in the African context uh, here, often supported by USAID-funded projects. And, and what long-term consequences are you expecting to see if U.S. research gets less funding, if the country withdraws from international organizations like the World Health Organization? Mm. I mean, one one element, of course, is um, that we that we have to expect um, a move away from uh, climate science, which affects uh, data series, long-term data series. We have already seen uh, the situation that climate scientists were blocked from attending the Intergovernmental Panel of Climate Change um, meeting. 
and uh, could not attend, could not contribute. The U.S. Um, has and is um, a strong contributor, has been a strong contributor to um, to the work of the of the IPCC, um, but also overall to the field of climate science. It is one of those areas, just as health science, where long-term data series are important, meaning if they take a hit, one could say, um, the quality of, of the data series as a whole is, is, um, is reduced, is impacted. This is um, a big concern, no? the effects on the fields of research in climate, in health and in other areas. But also another big concern, of course, is um, that a whole generation of, of researchers is being trained into yeah, self-censorship, basically, no? trained in how to frame things differently, how to avoid certain terms, diversity, equality, gender, women, uh, in order to... Um, to still be fundable or in order to ensure that the research is still fundable. And of course, that leads to redirection of um, the research itself, but it also leads to um, a normative change in uh, the political um, uh, take on, on these topics and mm -hmm. um, creates a situation where the, where the research basis for, mm -hmm. for political discussions is met. You've made very clear that these are some very big and serious consequences, but could you give any more concrete actual effects so that our viewers can understand how this is going to affect them? I mean, we heard in our report just now uh, a woman saying, you know, people will die if our um, air and our, um, you know, our, our um, food is not controlled. I mean, what does this mean for people? Mm. I mean, in the field we work in, which is um, in cooperation with countries, for instance, in sub-Sahara Africa, we know that through USAID-funded uh, projects within research, but also within uh, international cooperation and development, the healthcare systems are substantially financed by USAID um, funds and through USAID, which means that um, these will collapse to a substantial degree. Um, we have calculations from African colleagues for the African continent that um, clearly state that around 5.7 million uh, people on the African continent will be pushed into absolute poverty through the pull out of the USAID funds. We know that USAID, besides the healthcare sector, substantially also um, supports the refugee camps uh, in the sub-Sahara Africa, in the Sahel region, um, these will be substantially affected, meaning that a humanitarian disaster that already exists will be worsened further with the respective consequences for the people in terms of poverty, but also in terms of um, a further destabilizing of mm -hmm. the overall region of sub-Saharan Africa. Um, with regard to concrete consequences in the field of research, um, very concrete examples we find, for instance, within the field of health sciences, um, uh, colleagues that, that work within the field of breast cancer, for instance, are being um, pushed into, into yeah, taking out certain terms out of their proposals, out of, mm -hmm. f away from websites. The term woman is no longer possible to be used. Of course, that is um, somehow ridiculous in many, many ways. But we also observe in our direct networks, like for instance, in exchange with leaders of think tanks of research institutes across the globe, um, here a concrete example also from India, who are contemplating to change uh, their websites, to take certain terms off their website, simply because they, um, they uh, depend on cooperation with US American colleagues and US American partner institutes um, who would be negatively affected if uh, continuing to cooperate with, with think tanks and research institutes that stand in for um, the rights uh, for women, for LGBTQI, for instance, also in other regional contexts. So what right. I'm trying to say is the effects are the norms that are being renegotiated are diffused around the globe. What right. we're seeing does not affect America itself. Okay, Anna Katharina Hornig from the German Institute of Development Sustainability. We'll have to leave it there, but thank you so much.
Julie McNamara is with us now. She's the Associate Policy Director at the Union of Concerned Scientists. That's a nonprofit science advocacy organization in the U.S. Welcome, Julie. Let's start with that. How concerned are you right now? Significantly. We are confronting an all-out attack on science by this administration. They are attempting to hit the very foundations on which our scientific enterprise stands from the agencies, the researchers within those agencies, the capacity of those agencies to support the broader research ecosystem at our universities, research institutions, and around the world, the support that the U.S. has traditionally provided for public health, for air quality, for climate, across so many different issue areas, this administration is attempting to knock it to its knees. Can you give us a concrete example of foreseeable or already visible damage the Doge cuts are causing to the research and the scientific community in the United States? That's right. So we've seen early mass firing of workers within our agencies. That means that we're losing experts with decades of expertise who can guide on issues like hurricane warning, uh, like climate science, like public health, these researchers who are not just there for um, public health, for public service, but also supporting the broader research ecosystem, right? The researchers and the workers who enable our grant-making capacity, who fund dollars out to U.S. and global institutions. So these are things like canceling research on vaccine uptake, um, on pausing any dollars going out the door to support greenhouse gas emissions reductions and transportation infrastructure, on anything that would be tackling a disparity in emissions burdens by some communities over others because of an anti-DEI agenda. Um, this administration is attempting to take a hatchet to every single aspect of our scientific enterprise. What do you think is Trump's motivation here, though? Does he really want to save money, or is he trying to fundamentally obstruct scientific research in the U.S.? I think that's an incredibly important question. What we know is that these actions will not save money. Of course they won't. They don't in the immediate, and they absolutely will not in the decades and decades to come, right? Because research today is that which drives innovation and improvement now and moving forward, right? So these are the types of things that have cascading benefits for decades to come. You start with basic research and you get those technologies that sometimes take decades to emerge. And especially as a world, we are confronting some of these great challenges, including climate change, where we should be putting everything we have to pivoting to a clean energy economy. Instead, the Trump administration is attempting to be insular, to look back, to say anything that impinges on fossil fuels um, is, is, is out of line, is out of step, and not just won't get funding anymore, but is a potentially at risk of being harassed and being um, uh, accused of criminal violations. So this is an incredibly chilling effect. And so what is the Trump administration instead trying to do? They're trying to break agency capacity to support the general public. And instead, they're looking for the interests of a select polluting few. What options do you see to mitigate the effects of these new challenges? Well, I think because we're already starting to see the effects of these incomprehensible cuts, right? These, these actions that are not grounded in research or strategy, um, but instead just haphazard and indiscriminate firing and contract cuts and um, shifts in priority, people are starting to feel the effect. So we know that all across the country, lawmakers are starting to hear pushback for these very initiatives, and they're starting to get real community-driven efforts to, to, to make change. In fact, we've now heard from Republicans that they're canceling, they're recommending canceling uh, local town halls because of these pushbacks. We're also seeing scientists step up and speak out. And that's critical because we all have a role to play to say what role science has in the broader public good, what it means to have science switch from 
civil service and public science in the public interest and instead go and risk be at risk of being privatized and paywalled, right? What is lost along the way? And so scientists speaking up and speaking out is critically important. You know, this is risky because we're exactly seeing the, the Columbia University uh, example that was shown, right? That there is real risk to people for speaking out. And yet, we still know that we won't get what we need, the protections and the return to civil service and civil science unless we speak out and defend these things. And that's what you're doing. Julie McNamara from the Union of Concerned Scientists. Thank you so much. Thank you.